There are so many ways to build monthly passive income. The simplest example, property rental. Now, if you own a property, whether it's residential or commercial, and you have a tenant, you do know that you're going to collect rent, correct? And that is actually collected on a monthly basis. But there are a few things to note if you become a property investor. The first is that there could be income taxes because some residential properties that's rented out is going to add on to your personal income. So that's one. Then there's also the problem that some months you don't have tenant because in between tenancy, there could be gaps or so. Then the third and most annoying part is that when it comes to renting out properties, there could be issues or disputes with your tenant. So property renter is definitely not passive. Then some of you may be thinking, might as well buy REITs, correct? But REITs, do take note, they don't pay on a monthly basis. There are some that pay on a quarterly basis. And that's as close as you can get to a monthly passive income source. Then the second method, quite obviously, is CPF life or annuity plans, correct? I've covered many times on this channel. I'll leave links above if you're keen to find out more. But that only kicks in at the age of 65. Then the third passive income source on the monthly basis that you can look out for is actually in funds that pay out on the monthly dividend basis. Now, how do these funds actually work? Quite simple. When they invest into companies, companies pay dividends, they collect it. When they buy bonds, bonds pay coupons, they collect it. And a fund's job is actually to manage this inflow and pay you on an outflow basis. Sometimes they even pay out of the net asset value. So for that part, I'll keep it as a bonus towards the end of this video because today, we're focusing on the Singapore savings bonds. Now, if you don't find it too troublesome to manage your own bond ladder, then Singapore savings bonds definitely do work. Firstly, the returns are guaranteed and not just that, the principal is also guaranteed, which means you can choose to sell it two years down the road. There is no loss in capital. The second is that for Singapore savings bond ladder, you can actually build it at any age. You need not wait until you are 65 to start collecting passive income. So today, I'll be covering everything on it. And if you're keen, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Pretty long intro, but let's get on to things. The first thing to know about Singapore Savings Bonds is that it pays out on a semi-annual basis. As you can see over here, for this latest issue that is going to be in September, you realize that you'll start paying in 1st of March 2023 and you'll pay also in 1st of September 2023. Now the maximum amount of Singapore Savings Bonds that anyone can buy, whether it's Singaporean or foreigner, is $200,000. And this 200,000 limit is a combination of everything we bought in cash and SRS. And that explains why I'm not in favor of using SRS to buy Singapore Savings Bonds. Because quite simple, SRS monies, for my age at least, is not going to be liquid, which means I need to wait until the age of 63 to start taking it out. Therefore, I much rather use cash to buy Singapore Savings Bonds, whereby its best merit is its liquidity. I've actually previously had an older Singapore Savings Bonds that I've put 100,000 inside. When I sold it, the funds came back to me in the following month after that instruction in our banking was put through. Now that you understand the maximum that you can buy is $200,000, let's explain how you can actually get 400 per month in terms of passive income. Now, if you put 200,000 everything into one particular bond, which is this upcoming one in September, you realize that you could easily get $5,000 plus because 2.63% of 200,000 is actually $5,200. So settled, right? You put in this 200,000 and then it pays half yearly, which means 2,600 plus in March and 2,600 plus in September. Then the small issue is quite obviously, it's not a monthly payout method. It's not going to replace like your active income stream whereby it's on a monthly basis. Now you're getting on a half yearly basis, which means you need to plan out your expenses properly. If not, you run out in month three and month four, month five, month six, you're not going to have any coupon inflows. So the simple solution could be if you buy six issues of Singapore Savings Bond, correct? Then when it pays half yearly coupons, you can get 12 coupons spaced out throughout the year. Make sense? So how does it actually look like? It means you could buy $32,000 in September, $32,000 in October, $32,000 in November. Maybe December, let's bump it up to $40,000 because that's when you might want more cash flows. Everybody's traveling for holiday and stuff. Then in January, $32,000 and in February, $32,000 again. All in all, this total sum deployed is $200,000. And what that means is that for every month, you will actually get a cash flow of about $400. And in June and December, you get about $500. Now quite a nice idea, correct? 
And before I explain what are the limitations, help me smash the like button because it's taken our team hours to prepare this presentation for you and we really want to share to a wider audience on how to use Singapore Savings Bond properly for their own retirements. The problem quite obviously is this, is that the allocations right now for Singapore Savings Bonds are pretty low. And that's why in a previous video, I mentioned that if you have $200,000 to deploy for a retirement, do not go putting $200,000 in this upcoming bid because it's very likely you'll get only $9,000 or only $8,000 in terms of allocation. Nobody knows for sure and the results only come out towards the end of the month. What that means also is that if you bid for $32,000, you're also not likely going to get it. You're only going to get eight dollars or $9,000 in my opinion allocated, which means everything surplus will be refunded back to you. Now what does that mean? It means you probably need more bonds to achieve this same objective for you. And from my estimates, I think you may need 24 Singapore Savings Bonds to do that. And do know also, every time you buy a bond, it's $2. But $2 is still a small amount if you are allocating $8,000 per launch. How does it look like? So for example, this upcoming launch, you beat $8,000. In October, you also beat $8,000. In November, $8,000. And in December, $10,000. And what it means is in total 24 months, you're going to deploy $200,000. If you are following to here, let's move on and put actual numbers. And if you are curious or confused already, do leave your questions in the comment sections below. Now let's put actual numbers to things. And I've pieced out the August issue as well as the September issue to show you that the numbers do actually fluctuate. But we're just going to round up the numbers for simplicity. In August, if you had placed $8,000 and it pays 2% per year, that means 1% per half year, correct? In 1st of February 2023, you get $80. And in 1st of August 2023, you also get $80. Then when you buy the September issue and you get allocated $8,000, at a 2.63% annual rate, it means that 1st of March 2023, you get $105.20 and 1st of September 2023, you get $105.20 also. The amount steps up, correct? Because year 2, year 3 onwards, every year is an increasing amount. So referring back to the chart, for the August issue, you realize that your $8,000 in year 2 starts to pay 2.86% per year basis, which means 1.43% per half year. And that equates to $114.40 in 1st of Feb, 2024 and 1st of August 2024. The September issue, if you are allocated $8,000, means that you'll get $108.40 in 1st of March 2024 and 1st of September 2024 because the coupon rate for that year is 2.71%. So you realize these are $100 coming back. And when you will reach $400 per month, it's in 1st of September 2024. And that's assuming you start today. If on average, each bond pays you around $100, your four bonds purchased in September 2022, March 2023, September 2023, March 2024, will pay you in total that $400 when it comes to 1st of September 2024. Now again, a lot of numbers thrown at you. I am trying to go into details but not overcloud this whole message too much. And as always, not sure, leave your questions below. I'll try to pick up on them. The good part of building this whole bond ladder, you realize, is that the first, different bonds mature at different times because the September 2022 bond will mature in 1st of September 2032, 10 years later. But your last purchase, which is March 2024, would mature only in 1st of March 2034. Now, we don't know the interest rate as of then. And as always, as any investor to bonds, you realize that the biggest risk you face is reinvestment risk. The second good part of it is that if you have a better offer along the years, say in 2025, after you've completed this whole 24 purchases over the next 24 months, what you can do is to actually sell the worst paying bond that you have, correct? And get back the $8,000 or $10,000 and buy that newer issue down the years that pays you a bit more. Make sense? There is no lock-in period, which means you can swap out an inferior one for a better one down the years with just paying $2 transaction for sell and $2 transaction for buy. So all in all, this whole bond ladder is possible. It gives you guaranteed real return, but there's a lot of management to it. And at the end of the day, you'll see 24 bonds in your CDB account. 
and make sure it's comfortable with you also. Now, since you start me to here, let me share with you two bonus tips because I guess you are fairly keen on the Singapore Savings Bonds. The first is let me demo on my phone how to apply using the OCBC account. I've actually done so and screenshotted this so that it can save you time, especially if you're using OCBC also, and it's linked to your CDP account. Look for invest and look for Singapore government securities. Then over here, you can select Singapore Savings Bond SSB. It will explain the bond to you and simply click on the bottom right, buy. Next, you'll see the exact details of this bond itself. When you need to start purchase, when is the closing date of this auction, and when is the first issue to things. All Singapore Savings Bonds are 10-year tenure. When you apply for this bond, you can input the amount that you want. The auction results will be released towards the end of the month, and all access that you bidded will be refunded without any charge. The second bonus I have for you is if you have seen this entire presentation and you think it's too much of a hassle for you, simply look for bond funds that can deliver this objective of monthly passive income to you. Do note as always, bond funds, the returns are non-guaranteed, the capital is also non-guaranteed. A simple way to curate is to use Sharpe Ratio, which is the performance of a fund as compared to risk-free asset after adjusting for its risk. A higher ratio number means the fund scores well and it's a point that you can start exploring. For myself, I prefer Asian equities and I'm also looking for funds that are a bit more diversified so that the dividends they pay do not fluctuate that much. And let's use Fullerton Asian Income Return Fund as an example. This is not a recommendation of fund. I'm just using this to illustrate to you what I think is interesting as well as what you need to look out for before buying any particular fund. You can see the investment objective of the fund. You can see their approach as well as the fee structure. But more importantly, you need to focus on whether you like where they're invested into. This fund buys into investment grade bonds, as you can see in the credit ratings over here. And it focuses its equity investments into China, Hong Kong, and Korea. And it buys its equities by investing in ETFs and other funds. Now coming to you here, if you like content like this that touches on retirement planning as well as investments, smash the subscribe. I'd also like to invite you to two of my previous tutorials that I think will be interesting to you. The first touches on funds that you can buy and invest for life because these funds are highly diversified and I think for my curation, they are pretty good. The second tutorial relates to top quarterly paying dividend stocks in Singapore and they of course include some of the big names that you might be familiar with. If you are curious, check out these two tutorials and hopefully they can help you a bit more in your investment journey. With that, I'll sign off from this and see you there too. Take care and goodbye.